Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, thank you for joining us and worshiping with us uh, on this All Saints Day. Actually taking place on All Saints Day. Uh, we always celebrate that on the first Sunday in November and now it actually lands on Sunday, November 1st. So thank you for being a part of our All Saints Day worship. For those of you who are worshiping online with us this morning, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we're glad that you are with us. Take a minute to sign in. Let us know that you're here and worshiping with us. Place your names in the comment section. Uh, leave a message, a greeting uh, in the morning. And also feel free to interact with your fellow worshipers throughout uh, the, the service today. Uh, when we get to the time when we remember those who have gone before us uh, into heaven during our prayers, for those of you who are online, uh, please feel free to type those names into the comment section and add those to the prayers uh, that are being spoken as well. Uh, I'll uh, remind you uh, when we get to that place uh, again. If you're visiting with us, thank you, uh, welcome, uh, and let us know that you're visiting with us uh, as well. Our service this morning begins with our order of confession and forgiveness. Please stand if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is the first two verses of For All the Saints, 422, the first two verses.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I'll come with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. O oh God, generous and supreme, your loving Son lived among us, instructing us in the ways of humility and justice. Continue to ease our burdens and lead us to serve alongside of him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may please be seated. The reading from Micah, the third chapter. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who put nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without revelation. The sun shall go down upon the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, with the justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression 
and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe. Its priests teach for a price. Its prophets give oracles for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, surely the Lord is with us. No harm shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins and the mountain of the house a wooded height. This is the word of the Lord. We pray Psalm 43 responsibly. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you rejected me? Why do I wander in such gloom while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your sanctuary. That I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness, that on the heart of our wicked may thanks to you, God of God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the one who is my help and my God. Amen. Second reading from 1 Thessalonians. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do what they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you made it through. Last night was All Hallows' Eve, Halloween. It was a night to put on your costumes and masks, maybe to put on a new identity, or in some places, maybe to just even hide your identity. 
Halloween was a chance for us to become something that we're not. And, and when we were young, how fun it was, right? A chance to dream and to pretend to be a superhero or a dinosaur or a princess or, or a unicorn or whatever we want or whatever we could put together. Combine a really good costume with a vivid imagination of a child and we can for for at least for a few hours, become the hero that we always dreamed we could be. Disappear into our imaginations, have big adventures, save the day. As years go by, though, those costumes and masks lose their power. And it takes more than a mask or a cape for us to soar to the greatness we hope for ourselves. Maybe that's why adult costumes are more likely to be ironic or a joke or a symbol or a pun or a statement of some kind or, or maybe even something darker, something giving voice to something else in us that we would rather hide in normal days. Have you ever wondered though if costumes lose their imaginative power as we get older because we tend to wear some sort of a costume or a mask every day? By the time we reach adulthood, we have become masters, masters of the masquerade, learning to dress and to project images that we want people to see, and learning to hide what we don't want others to know about ourselves, keeping our true selves safely locked behind our masks and playing the role that comes with each successive age. There's a famous Shakespeare monologue in As You Like It. It goes like this, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. Jacques then leads us through the various stages of our life and the roles that any single person might play at any given time in their life until at last we come to the end, that second infancy, going out as we came in, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. What we all know, and what Shakespeare gave eloquent voice to is simply this, we're all hypocrites. We all play a role. We all hide behind a mask. And one of the masks that we hide behind is the one that we use to tell and to show the world that we really are good people. In his last public sermon before his crucifixion, Jesus speaks sharply, pointedly, against the scribes and the Pharisees. Not because their teaching is not of God, but because of the way they put that teaching into practice in a way that actually contradicts the faith that they hold so dearly, hold zealously. They know and they teach that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. But when they apply that commandment to their own life, they become much more occupied with projecting the image of righteousness, of being recognized for their goodness, that they actually fail to live out the witness of the God who has called them in righteousness and who has displayed God's own love, God's own goodness and mercy. They teach a righteousness that comes from God alone, but they refer a right, they, they, they live a righteousness that always refers back to themselves. They wear the costume, they play the part, they crave the recognition and the applause of the crowd, but it is all a performance, it is all play acting. For thousands of years now, Christians have held up the scribes and the Pharisees as exemplars of hypocrisy. It's easier always to point it out in others than it is to see it in ourselves. It's been thousands of years that we pointed out their hypocrisy as people who teach one thing and do another. And yet it turns out that we are no better than they are. Perhaps it is the one thing that unites all the various Christian denominations on this planet. We're all hypocrites too. 
we are all much, much better at playing church than at being church, at looking and sounding and acting religious in our own particular way than we are at actually bearing witness to the God who created and redeemed us and who we more often than not and to point to ourselves, our church, our building, rather than to Christ. At the end of each of our baptism rituals, we light a candle and we give it to the newly baptized with the charge that we ourselves have received from Jesus. We say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Many of us take that first part of that commandment to heart we let our light shine. We are actively engaged in good works, and we do it publicly to be seen by others. And yet we often forget that the goal of this, of all of this doing, is so that others might know and see the goodness, love, and grace of God. That the light we shine bears witness to the greater light, the source of our light in our life. That is maybe perhaps the the particular danger of our age, of an age where, where we are, are taught to self-promote, in an age where we look to snap pictures and post them on social media, pictures that give the impression that everything is perfect, that everything has come together just as we planned, pictures that always point and refer back to our, our, own, our own goodness, our own graciousness. The danger of social media and the danger of our world is that there is this constant demand for self-promotion. If you're working in the business world today, you have to give self-evaluations. You have to tell the world everything that you did. And then you also have to post and, and tell the world on social media all of the great things that you have done. And in all it, we forget why we do what we do. We forget the God-given purpose and calling that we've been called to and the things that we do for the benefit of this world. And we make the mistake again and again and again that the performance is the thing. What's strange, though, is in our effort to constantly promote ourselves and tell the world how good we are, how great we are, how much we have ourselves together, we lose ourselves. We have become like kids who refuse to take off their Halloween costumes for days and weeks and months and years on end. The magic's gone out, it's not cute anymore, the edges are frayed, the costume stinks, and yet we cling to these false fronts. It doesn't have to be this way. The good news of Jesus Christ lets us know in pointed words, in sharp words that cut through these disguises, that God has seen through our clever disguises and self-deception to see us as we truly are, to love us and accept us and welcome us as the people that we truly are when the cameras are off, when the freeze frame goes back to full living motion in God's presence, then we can drop this pretense. In fact, we are commanded to put down those masks, to look at ourselves as we really are, to present ourselves before God, confessing the true nature of our lives and our hearts. And it is there at that point that we truly find ourselves loved in a way that we can hear once again and receive the great good news. You are loved. Your sins are forgiven. You have been redeemed. What separates Jesus from the scribes and the Pharisees of this or any other age is that the scribes and the Pharisees load up upon themselves and upon us this burden of perfection that no one can bear so that they can create the appearance of fulfilling all righteousness, of making sure that their lives look like they're all together. And Jesus, Jesus sacrifices all pretense and image to become our sin, to be called the sinner, to take on our condemnation, to take the cross and its punishment, to suffer rejection, 
so that he might remove the burden of our shame and our guilt and reconcile us to God. He comes into our real life. He takes away the mask and the costume. He becomes us. The scribes and the Pharisees of every age would, would make us all put on the costume and pretend that, that we are spiritual superheroes and what matters most is the performance. Jesus invites us to follow him into the true adventure of being exactly who we have been created to be. Ordinary human beings made in the image of God, redeemed by God's grace. In short, a child of God. And so on All Saints Day, you don't have to be a hypocrite. You don't have to act anymore. Just be yourself. Stop the masquerade and trust in the God who loved you enough to let you see behind God's mask. To see God as he really is in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and who has made you ordinary person that you are, a true and authentic saint of God. Amen. We sing the next three verses of our hymn of the day for all the saints. Together with all of God's people, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, to the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During our prayers of intercession this morning, we will get to a point where we will remember those who have died in the past year, and those uh, who have uh, been influential in our lives, friends, family members uh, who have died. We invite you to share their names. If you're worshiping with us online, feel free to put those names in the comment section. Uh, names in the comment section then will be uh, your reading into the names. For those of you who are worshiping here in person, 
also uh, feel free to add your names at that time and hold those people uh, in your thoughts and in your minds in addition to the names that we read. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you invite those who feel most unworthy of love to a seat at the head of the table. Through the humility, vulnerability, and repentance of your church, bring a compassionate welcome to all in need of your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining God, guide all people on earth through harsh extremes and cycles of creation, drought and monsoon, blistering heat and freezing cold. Hold in your mercy all places where lives have been disrupted by natural disasters, especially we think of, of California and Colorado in the Gulf Coast. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Sovereign God, gather our country around a shared table this week during our national election. Bring peace and open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party, place, age, and socioeconomic status, so that we may discern the common good that you desire for us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, protect those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed in our nation. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, accompany those in new and unfamiliar places who need an invitation to community. We pray especially for those who have recently moved to, or have started their first year of college or who are beginning a new job in a strange time like this or of missionaries who are heading to their mission positions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you would unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. This day we remember all for whom who will now feast in your eternal presence, especially those who have died in this past year. We remember June Nissen, Julie Schmidt, James Betcher, Joan Foviello, Kevin, Kevin Godovin, Mitch Ursig, Jack Hilferty, Adele Soricello, Bob Ewell. In addition, we remember these family, friends, and loved ones. Alma Dolores, Charlotte Ed, Peter, Kath, Mike, Wesley, Grace, Jack, Roy, Robert, Gerda, Fred, Adele, Charlotte, Ralph, Herb, William, Florence, Marion, Stan, Carmela, Alex, Sarojini, KM, Hanagan, Jivaratan, Millie, Linda, Ethel, Bernice, Dai Chengen, Richard, Sarah, Thomas, Walter, Rose, Joseph, Joseph, Richard, Jim, Elda May, Ruth, George, Mary, William, Mary, Patricia, Mary, Frank, Andy, Larry, Pearl, Jean, David, Sonny, Stan, George, Eleanor, Joseph Emmanuel, Donald John, Christine, Mildred, Michael, Joanna, Johnny, John, Stella, George, Spiro, Annie, Peter, Agnes, Frida, Terry, Mary, Irene. 
hear our prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. Our worship continues with the sharing of our gifts and our offerings. We give our offerings in praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And we use those gifts that we gather for the sake of Jesus' ongoing mission and ministry in this world, the mission and ministry we've been entrusted to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed. I ask you to take a minute of your time to make an electronic gift uh, to St. Paul's uh, and to the mission that we have. Uh, through the St. Paul's website, www.stpaulsedison.org. Follow the links for online giving. When you give a gift online, please consider clicking the box that would make that gift a recurring gift. Then month after month, uh, your generosity can be repeated uh, as you continue to partner with us in sharing the gospel. If you wish and you're worshiping with us today, you may leave your offering with us today in the basket on the table in the front or you may mail in your gift to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 445 Old Post Road, Edison, New Jersey, 08817. Please stand. <laughs> Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels, and all the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are truly full of your glory. 
We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age. The promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets. And at this, the end of all the ages, the gift of your son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await the coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all of your saints in life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. If you feel gently at the top layer of cellophane uh, to expose the host or to open up the top and, and bring out the host, uh, when you have done so, please hold that up. The body of Christ given for you. If you peel back the lid on your cup with a wine, when you've done so, so we can all clean together, please take that up. The blood of Christ shed for you. The eating and drinking of our Lord's true body and true blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements before we go. Uh, first of all, uh, immediately after this, our ninth graders, 10th uh, uh, graders in confirmation, finishing up their confirmation. If they would stick around, uh, I'll have some books for you and we'll talk about our work. So uh, stay around, maybe help clean up a little bit and we'll get together uh, uh, immediately after this service. Uh, Bible studies this week, we have a Wednesday Bible study at 1 p.m. You can sign up for that uh, by following the links uh, in your virtual bulletin or in your order of service today. Uh, there will be no Thursday evening Bible study this week. I'll be taking a couple of days off at the end of the week. Our bedtime prayers meet every night at 9 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, the link to that, the login codes and passwords are found in your virtual bulletin each week. Uh, join us one night or every night uh, during the week to end your day in prayer uh, together uh, with our group of people who do that each night. Our next in-person gathering will be a service uh, of, actually it will be a service of evening prayer, not a service of Holy Communion, next Saturday, September, uh, November 7th at 5.30. That will be inside the sanctuary. Our next Sunday morning service will be an outdoor service so next Sunday morning at 10 a.m., and that will be our Youth Sunday service. Uh, all of these services, again, we ask you to sign up in advance for that so we know how many people are coming, so we can prepare uh, communion kits and uh, everything that we need. Uh, thank you for always wearing your face covering, maintaining social distance, and uh, following uh, the instructions for that day. If you're looking to volunteer in our food pantry, we could use some volunteers uh, to serve Wednesday or Thursday between 10 a.m. and noon. Uh, also volunteers at other areas in different times. You can call the church office or Jane Brady to look for more information about that. If you'd like to donate non-perishable food, you can do so by coming along around to the back parking lot and leaving that donation in the green bin behind us. We are uh, electing a special offering at this time of family-sized toothpaste and bars of soap. Uh, you could bring those and also leave those where you'd leave non-perishable food. Um, and if you're looking for volunteers, also if you're interested in being an online greeter, helping us with our streaming services or setting up or taking down the sound system, talk to me, to Paul, or to Tony about that. Uh, we can get you set up. In front of me, you'll see that we have a series of white roses that are here. It has been our custom to remember, especially on this day, those who are uh, buried in our memorial garden in the front of the church. And so there's a rose for each of the people uh, who have been uh, buried in our memorial garden. Uh, at the end of the service, uh, we would ask if you are able to make the walk around to the front of the memorial garden, if you would come up and take one or two of those roses and lay those uh, uh, into the memorial garden uh, and uh, we'll do that. At this time, we'll have our prayer for the memorial garden uh, in remembrance and thanksgiving for those who are buried in the memorial garden, uh, and then our blessing and our final hymn. God of grace and glory, God of the living, God who sustains us in life through Jesus Christ, we thank you for the lives of these, your servants, who have been laid to rest, here at St. Paul's in our memorial garden. We remember with thanksgiving Al Alistair Gordon Anderson, Florence E. Rossiter, Francisco Gonzalez, Irvin O. Kennan, Alma E. Koskinen, Milagros Gonzalez, Dominic J. Corrente, Marie G. Corrente, Joan Helen Robinson, Lawrence C. Roman, Marilyn May King, Marianne Roman, Patricia Ragenthal, Chet Rossiter Sr., Doris H. Johnson, Harold Metzler, Steve W. Tarabush, Elizabeth Anna Wolf, Fern E. Michael, Catherine E. Anderson, Jean E. O'Donnell, Wilma Metzler, Marilyn Keener, 
Ralph Robinson, Fred J. Richter, William H. Cope, Edward Ned O'Donnell, Carol A. Parenti, Olga Holcomb, John Johnson, Joan A. Richter, William John King, N. Janet Redinger, Alma M. Bennett, Alice Kennan, Earl Curly Michael, Doris J. Yule, Vincent Redinger, Patricia Ann Shields, Peter A. Bradshaw, Arachium M., Josephine Alice Regenathan, Robert E. Yule, Linda K. Hilferty, John P. Hilferty. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today is the last two verses of For All the Saints in 422. to the memorial garden. Please uh, proceed this way. I'll hand the rose. You can cut through the church, out the front door of the sanctuary, and into the memorial garden, and then come back that way. Now, go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you.